Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Marilyn Maya and today I have a favor to ask. Please pick a book that I can take on my vacation. I have four books that are my books and here they are and I haven't gotten to any of them and I really want to read them but I can't take four books all the way from Hawaii to furthest I'm going is Europe but I want to take one physical book that I can read because I might be gone more than six or seven weeks that's a long time so let's start the choosing the first book I couldn't remember if I bought it or if I was gifted to this by someone who someone special from Canada it's Wild Geese by Martha, Martha Ostenso. And what it says is, let me just show you. In a farming community on the windswept plains of northern Manitoba, the fiery Judith Gare struggles from free, for freedom from her father's brutal controlling rule. Told with vigor and lyric beauty, Wild Geese is a powerful and erotic evocation of life stripped to its fundamentals and a poignant exploration of passion need and isolation a sensation when it was first published the novel is recognized today as one of the forefronters in a new realist movement in canadian writing i love realist novels so when i opened it i saw a little yellow sticky that says read across canada april manitoba so i'm thinking that uh sonia at bookworm again uh, i'm sorry if i'm saying your name wrong bookworm adventure girl um was uh doing this readathon and uh i don't think she sent me this book um i have a, another Canadian friend, Lindy, who might have sent it, or it had to be Lindy. I can't imagine who else sent it uh, with that sticky note because that's a booktube thing. So, what do you think? It's not too long, it's 305 pages. Not too bad. The second book that I want to uh, talk about is a book that I talked about before and I never got to it. It's also, uh, I wouldn't say it's magical realism more than a retelling in a realist way. So is that magical realism? And it's by, did I say, yeah, I said who the, uh, this is by Barbara Cummins, one of my favorite authors that I so happy to find through booktube through uh, a few wonderful uh, booktubers i never would have found this author and something interesting they said about her which is really true common's world is weird and wonderful there's also something uniquely original about her voice tragic comic and completely bonkers all in one i'd go as far as to call her something of a neglected genius Nancy Scholes said that from the Ob uh, Observer. And I agree because of another book that I've read. Uh, our Spoons Came from Woolworths, which was just that, what they're saying about her. Um, and she was born in 1909. She died in 1992. And uh, she wrote The Vet's Daughter as well as Our Spoons Came from Woolworths. I read both of them. I love both of them. Um, this was written in 1985, so it's toward the end of her career and her life. And it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, which is my favorite fairy tale. Not the Disney one, but the original fairy tale. Uh, I was, I loved fairy tales as a child. And I was struck by that fairy tale, how it tells how beauty is in the eyes of the beholder that that was the sort of the theme that i got from it as well as the magic and the wonder um so bella winter has hit 
a new low. My name is Bella. <laughs> Homeless and jobless. Let me just, it's a nice cover too. She is the mother of a toddler by a man whose name she didn't quite catch. And her once pretty face is disfigured by the scar she acquired in a car accident. Friendless and without family, she's recently disentangled herself from a selfish and indifferent boyfriend and a cruel and indifferent mother. But she shares a quality common in Barbara Cummins' other heroines, a bracingly unsentimental ability to carry on. Uh, that's all I'll say, but I want to read this book. Uh, there's pros and cons of taking it with me. The uh, I had to uh, order this from, from England, so that's... Uh, I don't want to lose it. Uh, it's short. That's a pro. Um, yeah. So that's that's the juniper tree. I don't think I said the title. It's the juniper tree. Um, the next one can be considered to be uh, a Garb August uh, title. And that's Earl Stanley Gardner. I don't think he's garbage. I, I think he was a wonderful writer. But um, the books are quite uh, paperback and has that vintage quality that some people uh, think would would uh, be good for, for Garb August. And this one is a Perry Mason mystery, The Case of the Hunted Husband. And if you know Earl Stanley Gardner, this is not a very nice cover. Well, if you like black and uh, it's not terrible. So what is it about? A beautiful hitchhiker blamed for a fatal car crash, a mysterious dead man in a swank hotel room, a New Orleans woman with a missing husband and a Hollywood screenwriter with a scathing history. For Della Street, Paul Drake, and Perry Mason, it adds up to another cracking good mystery in the case of the haunted husband. So uh, that sounds like it might do for Garb August, and I, I am leaving in August. So, you know, Ollie from Criminali, what do you think? Does this qualify? <laughs> then the last book is still in the package. Yeah, I did peek at it, but I never did open it. It's been quite the couple of months, is all I can say. I do know what it is, though. It's a Barbara Pym book, and it's Civil to Strangers and Other Writings. Well, I got it for $2.99. That's pretty good. Um, the unmistakable Pym piquancy in, is everywhere. So this is her last book. Uh, Civil to Strangers is the last and perhaps the most rewarding of Barbara Pym's uh, writings, making it both a wonderful and poignant reading experience. Witty Vintage Pym is often up here in one more complete novel, Sections and Three Others, the best of her short stories, and a unique autobiographical essay. So that sounds really good. It's also a very nice cover. So should I take this with me? And it's also quite... Um, well, it's 350 pages, you know, that's not too bad. <laughs> For me, this is a long book, so <laughs> I don't know. But um, I love Barbara Pym. I've loved almost every book that I've read of hers, and I still have some to go. So should I read her last book, which is short stories, which I'm not that much into short stories? I don't know. What do you think? Well, that's the last of the four books. But I just wanted to uh, say that um, I have another four book Choose My Vacation um, episode coming up uh, probably next week. So tell me what you think and please put it down in the description box. Did you like any of these books? Have you read any of these books? Uh, do you think that I might like one of these books more than another? and that it's good for a vacation, let me know down in the description box. And please subscribe if you haven't already, and um, press that thumbs up. I heard that it's helpful in getting the video moving around the algorithm, which 
is what we want because I want people to, to watch my videos. <laughs> and this is my birthday month. And on the 24th, I'll be oh, 73. And also, it's my third year anniversary on BookTube. And I have a lot of plans, not only for BookTube, but for YouTube in general. So stay tuned for that. And until we see each other again, I wish you all health, wealth. That's pretty good. And of course, aloha.